Oh, hello, it's Heather. Today, I'll be sharing five tips to help you level up your AR experience. Number one, contextual instructions. This means giving people information when they need it rather than all at once. In AR experiences, uh, of course, you're combining the physical reality with the digital reality, and there is a lot of data to process and parse. So the best way to keep a participant focused and clear on what they're to do next is to reveal the information when they need it. One way that I do this is I'll actually attach a proximity trigger to a particular object. So when the participant gets uh, within a certain range distance wise of that object, they'll then be presented with an instruction, which in intrigues them, gives them the information they need, and then they can proceed to the next piece of the AR experience. Number two, optimize, optimize, and optimize some more. So optimization is basically like the secret sauce of XR. It's required um, for all sorts of distribution uh, paths uh, for good reason. We're typically designing for mobile devices. So until glasses become ubiquitous, um, that's just the truth of it, right? So on a mobile device, you not only have limited processing power, limited storage, but you also have like a limited screen real estate and you could experience these things anywhere. So you might actually be downloading the experience over your cellular data versus like Wi-Fi, which can take forever. So we really want our AR experiences to be as small and efficient as possible. So this means optimizing everything, uh, all the way from the story structure, through the interactions, all the way to delivery, like short and sweet, optimized and efficient, that's the way to go. Number three relate to the body. So augmented reality is a spatial medium. Our brains are actually built to understand space, typically in reference to our own body. So we inherently know how like near or far an object is and how small it is in relation to our own body. For this reason, it actually makes scale and proximity two incredibly powerful tools when building AR. You can create something with the dollhouse effect, making something extra small. It has the added benefit of actually being able to be seen on the small screen real estate of a mobile device. Um, or you can go really, really big. Like if you're standing next to this bunny with the red glowing eyes looking up at him, that's going to give you a very different visceral experience compared to an average sized rabbit. You know, like it can really play into your storytelling. Number four testing. Testing in the beginning and testing at the end and testing all in between. So uh, I have found that these spatial immersive experiences are actually difficult to intuit. Like I'll have one idea of how this experience will feel, but then when I actually try it with my body in space, it's like totally different or there's there are opportunities that like I missed um, when I was just thinking about it. So I really recommend trying these experiences with your body in space as soon as possible. So after I finish my storyboards and get a general plan of uh, what kind of experience I'm actually going to build, I always prototype. So what this means is I'll just use like simple shapes. Often they're built into the applications themselves. So essentially I'll take these primitive objects and shapes, I'll set up the key interactions in my piece or um, the key sort of gameplay that I'm experimenting with, and then I'll, I'll literally try it. Like I always gain insights this way. It's, it's really, really helpful. The other thing I, I really recommend is user testing testing, which means getting other people to try your experience. Because by the time that you're ready to share it with the world, your eyes have been on it for so long that you're like literally blind um, to uh, some of the opportunities as well as some of the challenges that like other people uh, might, might see more readily. So basically you need a fresh set of eyes and other people uh, are that. I really can't recommend it enough. Like it's only going to make your piece better. Again, we're going for that like level up and user testing will do it. And finally, number five. So when I start any experience, I always begin with a really, really simple question, which is why AR? Like, if this project or idea could exist equally as well in another medium, like say print or something like that, then why in the world would I do it in augmented reality? Often when a new medium comes around, it actually copies the mediums that existed prior to it. But then over time, its unique abilities float to the top. So for example, when cinema first came out, it actually just copied theater. So all of the shots were like straight ahead, flat, as though they were being filmed on a stage with a proscenium. 
Then people began to experiment and make lots of work, and they discovered things like close-ups and jump cuts, things that only film could do that stage couldn't do. And we're at a very similar crux with immersive art, um, with augmented reality. Like, we don't really know what XR is capable of or how best to use it. We're just making some of those discoveries now in the last few years. And truly, the only way that we're going to make those discoveries is if lots and lots of people like you, make lots and lots of work with it, and um, we'll discover them together. Augmented reality combines the physical world with the digital world. It's essentially creating a relationship between those two realities. And that is a very fertile spot for storytelling. You're essentially leveraging context. And like site-specific work has known the power of context for a really long time, but like with AR, we have this opportunity to create context much more easily and in all sorts of really interesting ways. We can, we can create context based on location, based on a person's physical body, their hand gestures, their facial expressions, um, language like spoken word or uh, 3D objects like physical objects in the world can also trigger and respond to AR experiences. I don't know, there's, there's a lot of opportunity for really interesting context. There's a lot of opportunity for innovation and discovery. And frankly, I'm just curious, like, let's discover what AR can do together. With that, thank you so much for watching. I hope that this was helpful. If you liked it, uh, go ahead and smash that like and subscribe, blah blah <laughs> Never know how to do that part of a video. <laughs> anyway, you know what to do. Until next time, happy making.